Hey everybody, my name is Tommy Dobbs. I'm the percussion professor at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith and I'm coming to you live-ish from my home studio in Fort Smith. Um, so that's why you see all this stuff on the walls and things like that. Uh, we're trying to do some quarantining um, and there's just a lot of things going on at school. So I'm doing this from home. I hope you all are well and I hope you have sticks and a pad um, and maybe a packet. I'm not sure if I'm going to send it to you. I'm trying to think future Tommy. Uh, but anyway, welcome. Thanks for having me. Let's dive right in. So today we're going to talk about snare drum and specifically we're going to talk about my fundamentals as far as grip and technique, body positioning, how I approach sound concepts and things like that. And we're going to play together. So normally you would be in front of me and we go back and forth and play, you play, I play, or we play together. But I'm going to try to simulate that here. So I hope you have your pads ready, hope you have your sticks ready, and let's have a good time. So a majority of everything I'm going to say is going to be, I think, on this side or on this side. I don't know yet. So on one of these sides, you'll see the music that I'm going to play. But before we dive into that, let's talk about grip. For you more advanced players, this is a good reminder for you beginners. This is just my concept. There's plenty out there. But this is just mine that I've taught for the last 20 years or so. So here we go. There's three parts to the stick, as we all know. The shaft, the butt of the stick, and the tip of the stick. We're going to take our thumbprint, this part right here. And about, I don't know, a third of the way up from the butt, we're going to place the stick like so, right on the thumbprint. Then we're going to take our index finger, the first joint of our index finger, and we're going to wrap it behind the shaft, behind the uh, thumbprint of your thumb. That was redundant, but you get what I'm saying. So basically, if you were to take a needle, it will go through the tip of your thumb, through the thumb, through the shaft, and the first joint, creating the fulcrum. First off, don't do that. That's just an analogy that I use. These three guys right here, we're going to wrap them around like so. And I teach that the stick is not an extension of the arm, meaning the butt of the stick goes like this. I teach that it comes off to the side um, for less of a chicken wing motion, like right so again thumbprint a third of the way up index finger first joint behind there creating a fulcrum like so three fingers here butt of the stick coming out the back i don't know about an inch or two i'm not really good with that so about this many not this many cool I teach match grip. Um, I grew up playing traditional grip, but it's kind of obsolete unless you're going to tilt your drum uh, and you want to learn one set of technique over here and another set of technique over here. I'm kind of lazy, so I like match grip. Do the same thing you just did with your opposite hand. And let me let you in on a little secret. Here's how you know if your sticks are actually matched. You're going to take your thumbs and you're going to put them together like so. And you're going to check to see if the butts of the sticks are together. Or do they look like this? So we're looking for the butts of the sticks with the thumbnails together, making sure they look like this and not like this. Cool. Now as we approach the pad or drum, whatever it is that you're using today, um, we're going to create a V or an arrowhead with our sticks. Um, it's almost a 90 degree angle, but something like this. We're going to put it down on the head like so and it's going to be facing away from our bodies. So in concert uh, percussion, we don't play in the center of the drum. Uh, in marching, you can because it's a Kevlar head, it's bulletproof, um, and there's lots of rebound. On here, on this pad, or in general on a concert snare drum, the center is the, the place where the least amount of rebound happens. So when you hit, it just stays instead of this nice bounce motion. So we wanna play off center, we got our V set, or our arrowhead, and you want it about a quarter's width apart, like a literal quarter right here, so we don't get that. Cool? The next thing is you want your body, you want your feet to be shoulder width apart, your body kind of straight up. I call this like the tree trunk, and these are my branches, and these are my leaves. So we have this, I, or you can kind of stand at an angle like this if you want to be hip with one foot under the drum. You can't really see it, but it looks cool, and let's be honest, it's about looking cool, right? No, I'm just kidding. All right, so back to shoulder width apart. Sticks on the, the pad or the head or whatever you're using. And I always start with wrist strokes. I do initiate the arm eventually, but it's for power, volume. 
it's not for ordinary strokes. And even when I am using the arm, my wrist is still a little bit in motion. So we start with our sticks up like so, and we let gravity, the super hip thing that we have on Earth, do all the work. So let the gravity take the sticks down, down, down. Go ahead and try it, down. Just play with me just like this. And if you notice, what's really cool about Zoom um, or just any sort of video recording is I can see my shirt and I can see the tips of the stick. And what I'm aiming for is the same spot that I start at. I want to come back to that spot every single time. This is called controlling the rebound. An example of not controlling it would be something like this. I don't even know what I was just doing there. I was doing some weird stuff. But basically, the sticks aren't going back to the same spot. So I'm aiming like right here in between these two buttons. If you're sitting here going like, is this what the clinic's going to be like the whole time? No. But unlike every other instrument or the voice, percussionists, we never touch our instrument. There's always an implement, a mallet, a stick, or whatever, between us and the instrument. So we have to know how far away the drum is or the pad or the mallet bar or whatever. We have to know how far away it is and we have to understand how gravity works in controlling the rebound or our strokes are uneven. It would be the same uh, if a brass player kept blowing short bursts of air and wondering why they don't have a nice long legato sound. So we're, we're trying to figure out by going slow what our hands are doing, and how to get the most consistent sound. Stuff like that, okay? So that's the basic overview. So just to recap, we go like this, we take the stick, the shaft of the stick, thumbprint, we put the shaft on the thumbprint about a third of the way up from the bottom, index finger, first joint, wrapped around like so. These three guys right here go around with the stick, not an extension of your arm, but off to the side. Match by putting your thumbs together, checking the butts, making sure it's not shabam. Then creating a V or an arrowhead, putting it on to the pad with a quarter's width apart. Let's put a quarter down. Sometimes I even draw a circle for my students. And we use gravity. All wrists, gravity. Sometimes I say to my students, imagine if you're a Pinocchio and I'm the puppet master, I tie strings to the tip of your stick and I pull them up like this. And if I cut the strings, you fall. That's the basic idea of the stroke. Nice and legato, smooth. Cool. So that's the basic overview there. All right. Now let's talk about a warm up that I've been doing since 2004, maybe 2003. I don't remember. I'm getting old. Um, so it's been a long time. It's called stick control, and percussionists aren't very smart. Usually we title things exactly what they sound like or exactly what they do. Like a paradiddle, it sounds like this. Paradiddle, stick control, it's about controlling the sticks. Cool? So on the screen right now, like I said over here or over there, um, is my exercise. And what we're going to do first, if you look at it, you'll see at the top, it says the Dobbs stick control. This is taken from George Lawrence Stone's book entitled Stick Control. But I've rewrote it to be 16th notes, so four sets of four 16th notes, as you see on the page, and sticking patterns. So instead of just seeing a thousand eighth notes or 16th notes, I've just turned them into sticking patterns that you're going to apply to the four 16th notes at the top. So if we look at number one, it's bolded, and you see it says RL, RL. So right, left, right, left. We're going to impose that sticking on top of the four sets of four 16th notes over here or over there. Okay, now I'm gonna start at 30 and we're gonna redo everything that we've already done. So before I hit the metronome, make sure you set your grip. You got your fulcrum going. You set the V, the arrowhead. And I like to start in the up position because right now we're just getting things loose and we're remembering how to control rebound, okay? So I'm gonna start the metronome and I'm gonna play number one for you, just so you can see. Two, ready, go. Not bad. All right. I did a good job. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to now add one extra layer. 
at the end of each of these um, numbers, whatever that last sticking is, we're gonna hold that out for a full eight counts. So if you're looking at number one, RL, RL, we're gonna play that just like I did, four groupings of four 16th notes. Then at the end of that fourth grouping, we're gonna take that L and hold it out for eight counts, okay? So here's what it would look like. Checking the grip. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Here's the left hand. One, two, three, four. I think I lied, we'll just do four. Stop. So we'll just do four uh, because eight, this is going to take a long time. So we're just going to do four. All right. So now what you're going to do is I'm going to play number one, number two, and stop at number three. So in between number one and number two, we're going to have four counts of the left hand. And then I go straight into number two. So it looks like this. Remember, check your grip. One, two. Three, four, left hand, one, two, three, four, number two, one, two, three, four, now it's a right hand, one, two, three, four, number three, one, yeah? So that's the idea there. And I go through that whole column like that. So now let's give it a shot. You and me, let's play numbers one, two, three, and four, stopping at number five. Number five is a new grouping, so we'll stop there. So one thing to keep in mind is before we start, make sure you check the fulcrum, make sure your sticks are, are lined up correctly and that we're starting up. And one more important thing, guys. When I do the single hand like this, You'll notice that my the hand that's not playing is staying up in this position. I want you to do the same, and here's why. It's used as a guide. So if you see me playing right now, you see that my tip is stopping right, well, trying to, at the, at the tip of this other stick. So using it as a guide on how to control that rebound, reinforcing everything every time. Okay, let's give it a shot. Starting with number one, check that grip. Let's play. V, arrowhead. Sticks up, one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, one, two, coming up to number two, three, four, number two, one, two, three, four, right, one, Three. Here comes number three, four, it's some doubles. One, two, three, four. Left hand, one, two, three, four. Number four, one, two, three, four. Right hand, one, we're heading to number five. Three, four, and ready, stop. Nice job, everyone. I didn't hear it, but I bet you it sounded good. Okay, cool. So now we're getting into double groupings. So if you look at five through 12 on the column, we have two measure chunks. So if you're looking carefully, it starts, number five starts with RRLR, then LLRL. If you know paradiddles, this is a reverse paradiddle. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put that on beats one and two, and then again on three and four. So the sticking would be something like this. Left, repeat, left, stop. And that's one time through, okay? So let's play together. I think we can do this. So let's try this. Can we try five to 12? Just playing, I can't hear you. All right, let's do it. So turn your metronomes on. Have fun, let's play together. Or actually, don't turn your metronome on. It'd be weird with it. Just play with me. All right, cool. Number five through 12. Check your grip. 
match it. V, arrowhead, sticks up. One time through each, five to 12. Two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, left hand. One, two, three, four. Number six, one, Two, it's a pair diddle. Three, four, get those sticks up. One, two, coming up to number seven. Three, look ahead at it. Here we go. Four, number seven. One, two, keep those sticks up. Four, left hand. One, two, look at number eight. Three, four, number eight. One, Two, three, don't give up. Four, right hand. One, two, three, four, one, two. We're on two of number nine. Three of number nine. Four, left hand and one, two. Keep that non playing hand up. Three, four, number ten. One, Two, three, four, look ahead. One, left hand. Two, we're looking at 11. Three, here we go. Four, E and O. One, two, three, four, right. Two, that was hard for me to say for some reason. Three, four, number 12. One, Two, three, ooh, triple right. Four, rights. Two, almost done. Three, four, one. Hey guys, nice job, nice job. Again, I didn't hear it, but uh, I'll check in with your band directors and they'll tell me if you did good or not. All right, nice job, guys. All right. So back to stick control again, if you want to do a little more advanced work, if you look at column three, or excuse me, number 13, 13 through 24, you see now every group of four 16th notes has its own sticking. This gets really fun and can be uh, kind of exciting. And I've sent you guys the rest of this as well. There's two more pages, so six columns. And each column, you'll notice at the top, is bolded. So number one is bolded, number 13 is bolded. So what that means to me is when you finish one column, when you start the next, you bump the tempo of the metronome five, 10 clicks. That way, by the time you get to that six column, that's five to six increases in tempo. So as you're doing stick control, we're working on controlling the rebound or stick control. We're working on speed. And because we're doing the single hand by itself, endurance. So it's pretty cool. I challenge you guys as we move forward to try some of these columns. You don't have to do all the, like the entire column in one day. When I start my students, I give them no more than five or six lines or numbers a day. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's move on to the next exercise. All right, welcome back. We are now going to do an exercise that was written by my former teacher. His name is John W. Parks IV. So this uh, exercise is entitled JWP4. Um, so, or as my students say, JWPIV, which kind of sounds cool. Anyway, this one, as you'll see, we're only going to do the first five lines. Don't worry about the sixth one. I shouldn't even have it up there. But if you look at the first line, it's 16th notes like you've already been doing. And the sticking at the top, you'll see RL. And underneath that, you'll see LR. That's not to tell you to switch every repeat. That's just saying start either on the right and go through the whole exercise. And then next time, start on the left, go through the whole exercise. So you notice on line one, it says RL, line two, it says RLR, LRL. Yeah, I said that right. We're gonna take the top stickings is what I'm getting at. So for each of these lines, we're gonna take the top stickings. We can already skip line one. We're gonna start with just a run through of line two. So these are 30 second notes. Don't let that confuse you. At the tempo we're going to do, they kind of just sound like 16th notes. So I'm gonna play line one, or excuse me, line two and then we're gonna to play together. So here's the metronome. These are 16th notes on the Met. 
e and uh, two, e and uh, three, right? And if you look at the the rhythm, we have one e and two e and two e and da 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 So I'll play that for you. Ready? Go. Yeah, so one more time, check out the sticking. Also, if you hear trains or, uh, or anything like that, there's a train like probably, I don't know, 100, 200 yards behind me. Also, there's like a playground behind me, so there might be kids playing. It's going to be chaos around here, but we're going to have some fun. So I'm going to play line two again, um, and just check out the sticking, and now I want you to play with me. So, da, 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 ready, and go, and... Repeat, one, two, left, right, left, three, left, right, left, four, repeat, one, two, three, four, repeat, three, excuse me, three, four, one. So take a second real quick and kind of play through that on your own and think about the sticking. That's plenty of time. All right, cool. Now, can we do line one one time and then go into line two and do it one time, stopping at line three? Let's try it. One. Oop, well, let me start the metronome. Here we go. One, two, ready, and go. And one, two, three. Here comes the next one. Da, 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 da. Cool, let's do it again. One, two, ready, and go, and. Two, E, and uh, three. Ba, 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 ba. Nice job, nice job. So, if you look at line three, you'll see that it's the inverse of what we just did one and a two and a three so let's play that just line three together now notice the sticking again top line sticking okay let's try it just line three three here we go one two ready and go and one two three four good let's try again one E and a uh, go E and a uh. two three four yeah not bad now can we play line two and line th three one time each so line two and line three one time each I think I'll figure out how to use my hands eventually all right here we go line two and three one two Ready, go. Three, four. Here we go. Three, four. Good. Remember, we're using the top line sticking, okay? And you see my ability to talk while I play? Why don't you try some of that too? I know you might not want to do it in a group setting, but try to whisper some of these counts. Uh, your ability to separate your mind from your hands is actually really important when you're trying to teach later in life. So let's try line two and three together. One, two, ready, <coughs> go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay. Line four. Check it out, check out the sticking. It's all alternating, but you're missing a 16th note. So check it out, all alternating, but you're missing a 16th note. It's kind of strange. Or no, sorry, you're missing a 32nd note. One day I'll figure out how to read music. Anyway, we're doing all right over here. All right, so line four, same thing, alternating, but you're missing a 32nd note. I'll play it one time for you. One, two, 
ready and go and one two three four repeat one left right left repeat right left left right right left left right repeat one two three four yeah not bad not bad cool this one gets a little tricky so now let's do line one two three and four one time each here we go check that grip here we go two ready and go and one two three four ba, ba, ba. one two three four one two three four one two three Good, let's do it one more time together. So line one, two, three, and four. Let's try two times each now. Line one, two, three, and four, two times each. One, two, ready, and go. And one, two, three, four. How exciting is this top line, right? One, super exciting. Two, three, here we go. Ba, 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 ba. Repeat one, two, three, four. Moving on one, two, three, four. Repeat one, two, three, four. Number four, two, three. Not bad, guys. Okay, we're gonna try line five, although later I have some exercises that work on this. And this is the double stroke roll. So right, right, left, left. A good way just to, like a 10 second recap on how to do this, or I guess recap, um, is I like to teach it with the sticks backwards like so, like you're skiing. And if you can play right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left on your arms like this, you try it. Go ahead. This makes this forces you to use fingers, right? I'm not. Now, please don't do it until you hurt yourself, or if it hurts at all, please stop. I don't want you to go home and say, "Look, Dr. Doves gave me bruises." Don't do that. So, okay. Now, let's do line five on the actual drum. So here's 16th notes, and I'll play line five. Two, ready, and go, and. Two, three, four, repeat. One, you can play with me if you want. Two, three, four, repeat. One, two, it's okay if you have to stop. Four, repeat. One, if it hurts at all, please stop. Three, four. Good. You hear this train? Pretty cool. There's like a planter's peanuts place pretty close by, so that's probably they're delivering peanuts or something like that. Okay, now the hardest part of this whole exercise is going from line four into line five. So we're gonna do that like two or three times and then we're gonna run this bad boy down. So line four into line five, one time each. One, two, ready and go and. Four, here we go, doubles. Let's 
let's try again. One, two, ready, and go, and. I think we're ready to try from the top to the downbeat of line six. We're not going to worry about playing line six, just the top to downbeat of line six. For your advanced players, line six is an inverted roll, so a tap roll. So let's try it. One time each, top to six. Check that grip. One, two, ready, and go, and. Good. You know, and I didn't mention this before, but feel free to stop, pause this, and practice, and then turn it back on. Just for fun, let's kick it up about 20 clicks, shall we? This metronome I'm using is a little old. Um, it's been with me longer than you guys have been alive, I'm sure. It's about 18 years old. Um, so I just don't want to buy another one. Anyway, we're going to try now. This is 60 or 50 BPM. These are 16th notes. Let's try each line twice and have some fun. Check your grip. First thing you want to do is squeeze. Don't do that. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three. Remember, repeat. Four, repeat. Two, three. Take it that, take it that. Cool. Let's just have some fun real quick, cause you know it's it's like it's been a little bit. Let's go a little faster. How about seventy? A little chop out for this is I have my students go all the way up to 100, 110. My thought is once you can do this at 100, 110, you're good to go. Um, and if you notice, a lot of these rhythms later in your playing, you're gonna see them all over your music. This is a gallop rhythm. Like dig it dum dig it dum dig it dum 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 dig it dum dig it. You know what I mean? We play that rhythm all the time. And sometimes people rush, drag, or the spacing between the notes starts to swing. This eliminates that. This also works on a nice quick single stroke roll and doubles. Right? And you can do it at different dynamic levels too. So just for fun, then we'll move on. Seventy. Remember, don't squeeze. One, two, ready, and go, and. I guess I didn't say, let's do it two times each. One, mm, uh. Sad day, let's redo it two times each. Two, ready, and go, and one. Nice job. Hopefully you didn't hit your sticks like I did. I bet you, yeah, my pad's a little crooked, but either way, that was my bad.
but I don't believe in editing it, so you got to deal with my mistakes. Cool. Let's move on now. All right. One thing I like to do after I do a lot of singles exercises is I like to mess around with the metronome because for the longest time, percussionists were known as timekeepers. Well, that is our job to a certain extent because not always do we have melodic material to play. Um, so one thing that you have to make sure of, whether you're a percussionist or not, is that you have nice, solid foundation in time. Uh, and I found these exercises written by a guy named Casey Cangelosi. Um, he teaches at James Madison University. He wrote this book a long time ago called Technical Timing. And you can see it over here. Um, it's a duet with you and the metronome. So the, the, the note with stems up, or the top line, is you. The bottom line stems down is the metronome. So what we're going to do is we're going to t do number one, and we're going to repeat it. And you'll notice there's a 3-8 bar in the middle. Don't worry about that. Just play three eighth notes. What that's going to do is flip the metronome around or shift you back just a little bit or forward. It shifts you around. Basically, the metronome will be on the off beats for that second measure of 4 4. Then it flips you back with a 3 8 bar going back to the first measure. So I'm going to play it once so you can hear it. I have the metronome at 80 BPM uh, and we're just going to do quarter notes. So here's quarter notes. I'm going to Again, it's like 18 years old. I'm going to play the top line, and the metronome is the bottom line. For quarter notes, I'm going to do all one hand. For eighth notes, I'll alternate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one. It's pretty hip. You're like, okay. Okay, so it's I like this one. You play along with me now. The goal here is when we get to that third measure, that second bar of four, the metronome should literally sound like chank, gong, chank, gong, chank, gong, chank, gong. If it sounds like chank, chong, gang, gong, gang, gong, gang, gang, then we know we're wrong. Also, working on timing. Let's try it. Right hand quarters, alternate eights. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, mm, four, one, two, three, one. Feels good. Three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. Cool? So that's number one. And you can see on the page they put up, uh, he puts in there accents and taps. You can get like one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right? We're gonna skip that. And have some fun now. Let's go to number twenty-four. Let me scroll to it. I got too many monitors going on here. Cool. So number twenty-four is one and a two, or that gallop rhythm that we did before. And if you look at the three-a bar, it's now that second measure. Or second, or sorry, third line of the parts exercises, one, uh, one and a two and a three. So I'll play number twenty-four for you. I'll alternate most of this. One, two, ready, go. Yeah, let's just slow it down just a little bit, just because it's your first time looking at it. Not that I don't trust you. Man, I have to work to get this thing. All right, we're at 70 now. You try with me. Check the grip. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one. I always find that it's actually harder to go slower because there's lots of space between those quarter notes. So feel free to jump around on tempos and everything like that. Um, I think we'll stop here for this one just because of time. 
And let's move forward to something I call diddle check or the double stroke roll. Okay, so we're gonna do this diddle check exercise. Um, and you'll notice it just progressively shifts the diddle from one to E to and to a. Uh. Then it goes one and two and. Then it goes E, a, uh, E, a. Uh. Then the last measure is a full line of one and to two and to just diddles, okay? What we're gonna do first is we're gonna flip back to our drum stick skis, and we're gonna play this first uh, four measures on our arms. So the metronome is 50 BPM, and let's just give this a shot. It's gonna force you to use fingers, not wrists. So if you're knocking on a door, no. If you're doing this, yes. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. Measure three. Good, let's try that again and I'll get my shirt out of the way. Same thing. One, two, ready, go. Now my other one's all messed up. Whatever, measure two. One E, three E, one and. Three and one, three. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's flip the sticks back and let's play it all on the pad now. And you might miss a couple things, that's okay. But just for time's sake, let's go ahead and run it down and then we'll slowly start to speed it up. I'm gonna do it at the loudest volume that I can, producing a good sound. Same thing with stick control. Right, maybe a little lower. Let's give it a shot. 50. Whole thing. One, two, ready, go. Make sure you're not accenting. It's not, it's just the same volume. It's actually gonna be louder because you're adding more. One, oops, five, Not bad, not bad. Do you mind if we speed it up a little bit? I'm just kidding, I can't hear you guys again. Gotcha. You're probably like, this guy is old and lame and I don't like his face, so that's fine. I don't like it either. Um, let's try 75. When you start this, you're gonna wanna squeeze and you're gonna want to accent the diddles. Don't. One, two, ready, and go, and. Nice job, guys. Now if we go a little faster. Let's try 100. Gotta dust off these old man chops, you know what I mean? Let's try it. Set that grip, don't you squeeze. If you have to drop out, perfect. Just come back when you can. One, two, ready, go.
still got it. We still got it. All right. So you'll notice the tempos from 30 to 140. My opinion is if you can play diddles around 140, 130, I think you're going to be okay in life. Um, so don't start there. This is a good way to cause carpal tunnel or tendonitis. Um, start slow, start big, and use gravity. What you don't want is to be a fast player with a tense, really choked off sound. You want to have nice open sounds, not... You want nice and open sounds. Trust me, your band directors will appreciate it and you'll get called back for gigs. I promise you that. Okay, let's move on to the next exercise. Okay, one of my favorite things in the world um, are flamps. They're my favorite thing in the world now because they didn't used to be. When I started school, I didn't know how to read music. I didn't know any of that stuff. I started as a drum set player and I came into my first classical lesson thinking like, oh man, I can play circles around these kids. I can play traditional grip. That's super, super cool, right? I came in and I played flams. My instructor grabbed my sticks and he threw them across the room and he said, flat flams make me sick. Go play flams for two weeks straight. If you come back and can't play them right, I'll fail you for the whole semester. Well, I failed the whole semester uh, because I just did. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought that I knew what I was doing and I didn't. So a flat flam, if uh, you didn't know, sounds like this. It's straight double shot. Train. Okay? It's a straight just double shot right down the middle. What you want and why, why it's called a flam is because of the way it sounds. Flam. Flam, flam. Little note before a big note. Man, this train accompaniment, I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, I hope you can so I don't sound crazy when you're listening back to this, but it's super loud. So what we're gonna do is if you look at what a flam looks like, it's a big note and a little note. As I mentioned before, we're gonna harness gravity and control the rebound of the stick. So what we're gonna try to do is when I say drop, go ahead and get in this position. When I say drop, you're going to release both hands and try not to get this sound or this sound, it's right in the middle. So let's try it. Right hand up, big note, lower note. All right, Pinocchio's, cut your string. Ooh, friggin'. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, let's try the left hand. Drop, drop, drop. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Cool, so if we look at this first exercise, it's four lines, and what it does is it's gonna have one hand going for four counts, then you switch and do another hand for four counts with a flam on the downbeat. Then those counts get closer and closer and closer together until you're alternating flams, that fourth line. So I'll play this one time through for you at about 60 BPM, and you'll see what's going on. Don't worry about the four, four, six, eight, two, four. That doesn't matter. All you're gonna do is count to four, count to three, and then count to two. So I'll show you. Set. This is the four one. Two, ready, and go. And one. Three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Now alternate. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Let's slow it down just for a second, just so we can get the kinks out. Again, this metronome is super old. So one thing you'll notice me doing is when one hand does a flam and then continues with a tap, you'll see the other one slowly raise into position. This is not wasting any time. What you don't want is to right before the flam's supposed to come, you go, oh God, like that. That's how flat flams happen or you look like you're gonna like hurt the band director or something. So watch carefully this time as you play with me, watch my hands lift up to get prepped for the next flam. Here we go. So play with me, we'll set. Big, little. One, two, ready, and go. And one, prepping. Two, prepping. Three, four. Going to threes now, but still prep. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. One, two, two, two. 
two, two. Again, one, two, three, four, three, four. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, stop. Nice job, nice job. And again, we can go faster and faster and faster with this. Let's try just like a little bit, like a little bit. You know, it's, it's, we've been going for a hot minute. Might as well just speed it up. Here we go. Big, little. One, two, ready, and go. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, four, alternate. Let's repeat it. Yeah, welcome to Flams, guys. So next time you're doing all region tryouts or you have some Flams in band, first thing I want you to think about is are they flat? Are they an actual rhythm? Or are they this? Right, just that little bit of extra. So again, if you just think about big, little, drop. Big, little, drop. And now I'm, I'm making it sound easy or I'm saying it's, a, it's easy. It's not. Trust me, I failed my first semester of college auditions at a music school because I couldn't do flams. So I spent my life since 2006 teaching and perfecting how to do this. So um, give it a shot. Uh, there's multiple exercises in there for you. So the last thing I like to talk about are buzz strokes. Buzz strokes are the basis of everything that we do uh, in the concert season. When you're on the marching field, sometimes they'll write buzz strokes in there, but it's usually double stroke rolls, which we worked on in two separate exercises. Here, we're going to try to get a specific sound. If you slow down my stick, which I wish I had a slow-mo camera, it would you would hear multiple bounces. That's why they sometimes call this roll a multiple bounce roll. So instead of this, you'll get or if I slow that down, you hear da 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 da. But at the very end, there's even micro bounces. So some people try to do threes, fours. But what we're going to try to do is somewhere between the three and four. Okay? Here's how I teach it um, we're going to keep our grip the same. And I'm going to ask you to play four notes after I play four notes but I really want you to listen to the sound. I'm gonna start with a really, really tight buzz and then go to a very extreme uh, drippy buzz is what I call it. Then we're gonna find our way back. So tight, super drippy, back. I'll play four, you play four. All right, now let's start to open them up. Or not, my bad. Okay, now let's try to find that healthy medium. together. Nice job, nice job. So now that we have that buzz um, kind of idea in our mind, we're going to have to go between that buzz sound and a regular stroke sound. So like that. To use that, I don't reinvent the wheel. I just take that diddle check exercise and I insert buzzes this time. So you've already worked on it. All we're gonna do now is add the buzzes. So I have the metronome at 70, check out the music. 
And what we're going to do is give this a shot. So um, try your best. I'll go one time through, play with me, and we'll loop it a couple times. It's not going to happen overnight, but what I want you to listen for are these things. Make sure every time your stick comes down to buzz that it sounds the same as when you do it again. We don't want... If we do that in the first couple lines, when we get to that last measure, it's going to sound... I don't even know. It's going to sound strange, right? So let's try that. Think about consistency in the buzzes. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. to it. Here we go. Now you might be thinking, Dr. Dobbs, that sounds like not a cool roll. Well, of course, because it's only at 70. At There's different roll speeds that I do for different um, tempos. So if we have a quarter note value or four sixteenth notes at 70, I probably wouldn't play right? Because that doesn't sound like a roll. I'd probably pay, play like a six tuplet and then buzz it. That sounds more like a roll. However, we're going to start here and slowly speed it up. And later, maybe if you want to know more about buzz rolls and things like that, I can show you a chart that has a different tempos, different, um, excuse me, at different tempos and different note length values. I have different rhythms assigned. So between 120 and 130 for a quarter note, I probably use four sixteenth notes. At a quarter note between 90 and 100, I'm probably going to use a five or a six, six tuplet or a um, septuplet or sep, doesn't matter, five or six. Cool. So now let's speed it up and try this accent tap exercise one more time. We're at 100 now. Don't worry, you can do it, I promise. Let's try. One, two, ready, go. I was thinking about too much. Can we do the last three measures for me? Last three measures for me. One, two, ready, go. So now from the 70 and 90, you can start to hear that it's becoming a roll. Now we're gonna bump it one more and hang on tight. And now it should become an actual roll. Let's try around 115. Okay, I'm going to turn the 16th notes off so you can just hear me. One, two, ready, go. I'm going to turn the metronome off. We have a roll. So this is an exercise that I do every day. In fact, a part of my daily hour warm-up that I do every time I practice snare drum, um, it has everything that we went into, plus additional rudiments and some more advanced things like fivelets and nines and, and other kinds of rhythms. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I wish I could be there in person. I love interacting with students. Um, this is my favorite part of the job that I get to do. It's working one-on-one -on -one or in groups with people because I learn every single time that I do this. I learn something new. I learn something exciting. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Enjoy the train sounds. I really hope that they're there when I listen back so you guys don't think I'm crazy. Thank you to your band directors for having me. 
and to ASBOA for all that they do for music in the state of Arkansas. I'm not from the state, I'm from Florida, but it's very um, apparent that ASBOA uh, loves you guys and loves music education uh, because of what your band directors are doing and what ASBOA does to help them do their job. So thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.